grateful for um, you guys in the audience as well as these great panels. Um, so next we're going to do something really special. We're going to talk about the power of specialization and how to dial it into your own niche. And so I have two amazing product speakers who again are super impressive and I'm so grateful because they're going to open up the, the, the box and show you and tell you how they did it so that you can go out and duplicate in your business as well. Please help me welcome Josh and Matt. Come on out, gentlemen. because I had an opportunity to hear your stories and how you started and also how impressive what each of you has built um, with your business right now. So I'd, I'd like for you to share a little bit of that with this group as well. I'll start with you, Niall. Tell sure. us a little bit about where your business is at today and then also tell us about that journey on how you got started. Yeah, appreciate that. So my name is Niall Lundgren. I work at Surhand. I'm a real estate agent in New York City. Um, I have a, an amazing career. I've been doing this for 15 years. Um, I love real estate. I love every aspect of it. And um, currently, I have a team of 10. I have two markets. I'm in New York City. I'm also in Florida. Um, I sold $100 million worth of real estate last year. The highest deal I did uh, was $34 million. And I've seen an exponential um, growth in my career. So that's kind of like where I'm at now. And then the story and how I got there, I think, is very helpful for you know, potentially some new agents because at the end of the day, the biggest thing you have to realize is that it takes time, right? Everybody wants to go quickly and it's important to push the boundaries, but you have to be patient at the same time. And for me, my niche that I found when I first got into the business was that I was very savvy with social media. So the way I branded myself is that I'm not a real estate broker. Um, in fact, I'm actually a media expert. So if you're selling widgets on Amazon, you still need to be a media company and have some sort of aspect of photos and videos for yourself. So what I've done is started off with a blog, 2008, 2009, that got me going, then YouTube videos, and then I started getting into podcasting. So long form, I've done about 250 podcasts. So all of those different experiences, then I got into speaking and I've done New York Real Estate Expo. So getting out and being in front of, of folks on the media side what it has done great for me because what I've done is um, on the media side is I've created um, a, a luxury brand which is what Josh also has done um, and he'll talk about that in a second but when you create a luxury brand you want to also market to luxury style or luxury clientele and I've done that through my media by getting myself out there by making long form content which is a pillar content. I don't know if any of you have heard of Gary V, but Gary V he has a content pillar model where you create one long form content, whether that's a vlog or a property tour, and then from there, you can slice that down to many small videos. So, my, and basically what that has done for me is that got Ryan Serhan to, to recognize me. He was like, wow, you're, you're really great with the media. And then he basically pulled me to him, and I've been working there for about a year and a half now. I was agent 20 when I joined. Um, and he's like, we're going to amplify you and, and really push you on the media side. And it's been a lights out since, since I got there. But the main thing I did was focus on the media first. And uh, by doing that, it was, it was just, it was lights out. It really helped me amplify who I am, where my clients are, are coming from, and um, you know, help me to become the agent I am today. I love it. It's a great story. And I love um, how you took something that you were already like committed to and was able to take that to the next level, right? Yep. Um, Josh, yes. tell us your story, because you also have a really impressive journey. Certainly. So, uh, Josh Daniel Peters, I, uh, I represent the biggest estates in Paradise Valley, Scottsdale, and Phoenix. I specialize in new development and being super fucking authentic. Um, ultimately, I, I got into the business about eight years ago, and full-time, and I, I thought maybe I wanted to build a team, and I kind of assessed the market, and I was like, crap, I can make so much more money if I just focus on luxury. So that's what I did, I just focused on luxury. Uh, one specific zip code, I knew it inside out, I studied tax record, I drove through every single street, I know it like the back of my hand. I'm truly a specialist, I know I'm a psychopath model. Like I know absolutely everything in that zip code. 
And then I took that same thing and I applied it toward new development, new construction. And uh, that's been extremely successful for me because ultimately, once I learned all the construction codes and the municipality codes, I really dialed in on that and I've created such a, a loyal squad of key builders and developers. And right now we've got the three largest projects in the state under construction, highest dollar amounts. It's, it's been absolutely fantastic, so much so that uh, now I'm getting into development and I do development deals as well. And uh, it's just me and my assistant turned partner, turned wife, which is probably some sort of HR violation, but we can talk about that some another time. Uh, but it's been absolutely amazing. We've crushed over a, a billion dollars in real estate in eight years. And we've, uh, last year we did 156 million, uh, 55 sides, 18 we double-ended, and this year we've already crushed through 114, and again, it's just the two of us. So it's been absolutely fantastic. That's amazing, right? Let's give, I mean, it's a big clap. Thank you. Let's really um, Josh, I remember when we were talking last week, thinking about what we wanted to share today, you mentioned um, and getting started and how you got started. Um, I think you were door knocking, you were, or, or something like that. You went to someone and you said, whose house is this? Oh my goodness. Yeah, let's, let's share that story. Yeah, so like, I, I think I tried just about everything starting out. Uh, I really wanted to break it into development. I had no clue what the hell I was doing. Uh, I asked somebody if I could sit in an open house, and I, and I ended up landing a developer out of my very first open house, which was amazing. I sat a dirt lot open for like the longest time, and I earned the respect of everybody in the neighborhood because they thought I was a psychopath sitting in the middle of like Phoenix, in the middle of the suburb, with a little table out there, like so crazy. But anyway, so uh, back to the, the story that, that you had asked me. So ultimately, I, I just rolled up to this house that I saw under construction, and there was an older woman that was outside kind of like gardening. And I asked her, uh, ma'am, can, can I speak with you in the house? And she said, yes. I'm like, okay. And then I was like, can I speak to the owner of the house? And at this point, I thought maybe she had dementia, but she's like, no, I am the owner of the house. And I'm like, oh my goodness, okay, well, uh, she's like, who are you? And I'm like, I'm your new realtor. She's like, well, I've been, I've been with the same realtor for 25 years, my tennis partner. I'm like, that's a huge mistake. So really, it's just about taking chances. That was the biggest thing out there to do is just take chances that you were only gonna get one shot and you're screwed if you don't take it. So just take the shot every single time. Yeah, Kyle mentioned that this morning, right? So that's, that's a great theme. Um, so, you know, tell us, Josh, too, because you went into development in particular. Yes. And that's a very specific niche that a lot of people might be intimidated by. Like, sure. how did you get into that? Because you didn't grow up in construction. You didn't grow up in development. You didn't have, like, a parent kind of leading the way or telling you what to do, right? Yeah. You, you bulldozed your way into it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> like, look, like, at the end of the day, like, I grew up, I grew up poor. Uh, my, my parents were amazing people. I grew up in a home that was $38,000. Now my garage is bigger than the home that I grew up in, which is insane. But um, ultimately, I just I just figured it out. Like, in school of hard knocks, uh, I just kind of, I, and maybe I a little faked it, so I made it a little bit, just, just enough. Uh, but then I really just studied. Like, I, I out hustled everybody in our market, and I just became crazy about learning and analyzing the market. I built my own algorithms for valuation modeling in my specific zip code. And it's crazy, I mean, I just, if you provide your clients value, they will come back, they will be loyal for forever. Like, my, a lot of my clients will make a move without calling me first, and it's how I'm able to navigate so well. Yeah, I think that's great, because to me, the lesson I took from this story is, you've got, he led, his business with building knowledge and building an expertise, right? That is one way to lead yourself into a business. And then, Niall, what you did that I thought was really great, you led your business with content, right. with brand. Um, specifically, too, you built this luxury brand. You know, a lot of us believe that New York is uh, uh, synonymous with luxury. Um, and so, tell us, like, about your content strategy, your brand strategy, how did you leverage that into luxury in particular? Sure, I think one of the big things you need to understand if, you, if you're looking to break into any sort of market, whether it's a luxury market or the Houston market, you have to say, okay, this is what I'm going to do and like really focus on it. So we were talking about earlier, like, you know, when somebody wants to get into luxury, do they know anything about luxury? Do they know anything about what a luxury buyer is like? And so what I did first is I didn't know much about luxury, so I started to investigate, and I found a couple of people that had money, and I became friends with them, and I understood what it, what it was. And now, 
what I do is, is I travel a lot with a lot of my clients and I become friends with them. And my content on social media reflects a very luxury lifestyle. Sometimes I fly in private jets, I go kite surfing, uh, kite surfing in the Red Sea on a big yacht. But that, if you talk to you know, certain people, you're like, hey, I was kite surfing in the Red Sea. It's subtle, but they understand and they're attracted towards it. I also wake surf, so a lot of like water activities, boating activities. And then, I, and then I put those reels or clips on Instagram, and then those clientele, they see that. So they see high end property, they see me making uh, authentic videos, they see me traveling, which is what they do. I'm kind of surfing on this, bro. <laughs> which is what they do, then they call me. And I'm like, hey, yeah. You know, just as like, you know, you know, just by being the person who's, hey, I'm on it. If you want to buy something, you know, you call me. By the way, if you want to go to Egypt, you know, you call me. I'll let you know what the best place is and how to navigate that. So that has been very helpful in me, and I think it's just about being consistent. So find out what your niche is, and then just like literally, as Joshua said, just just own it. Forget about what other people say. There's going to be a lot of people who have their own insecurities, and they're going to say, "Oh, don't do that." They're called fans. Yeah, they're called fans. yeah. Like that's great. Like I appreciate what you're saying, but like you're in this, you're in the fans, and I'm on, I'm on this field playing, right? You know, and that's, what, and that's the biggest thing. And then you also have this really great, like, I don't know if I want to call it a motto um, about content creation. Right. Tell us about that strategy. Listen up, this guy knows his shit. Yeah. So whenever you're, you're, whenever someone says, "Oh, create content," it's it's very daunting task to wake up one day and just start creating content. Like I don't even know how to create content. That, I, you know, I'm sitting here, but I don't know how to do it. So how do I do it? Well, instead of thinking about creating content, which is very very difficult, I think of document. So I am documenting what I am doing. Don't go crazy and try to invent some scenario. If you're literally making phone calls that day and you're striking out, that should be a TikTok. That could be a reel because that's authentic and other agents are gonna identify with that and they're gonna to wanna to follow you because of that. So remember, do not worry about making content. Just focus on documenting what you're doing and just post it and you'll be fine. Yeah, and what's funny is um, when we did our prep call to him, like, oh, what kind of content are you doing? And, you know, thinking like, oh, are you leading with knowledge about luxury or whatever? And he's like, I just bring a lot of energy. Go watch my content. And I said, okay, challenge accepted. And so I went and watched the video. And, like, you had, like, a really great video. And he was literally washing Wash windows in um, a luxury high rise. And he had a $15 million <laughs> apartment on washing the windows because that's what I do. If you hire me, I'm going to do whatever it takes to make it happen. And it's a view apartment. It's right over Fifth Avenue, above the Met, Central Park. All the views, and the owner's like, you got to clean the windows. And I'm like, sign up. No <laughs> no <problem. laughs> That's my extra form of uh, income. But I, <laughs> but I just love that because that reiterates that very powerful point of document, don't create. And I think that's just a really powerful tip for those of us that are out there, you know, building content every, every day because now I can't say create it. Um, because now we have to just document what we actually are doing. So thank you so much, gentlemen. You guys are thank amazing. You. Thank, you. thank you to our audience. Thank and you, uh, you know, if you guys want to check them out, you guys will be around later. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. All right, thank you guys so much.